In this video, we're going to be continuing with the navigation that we've worked on for a few times now, adding in one more micro interaction that we can do where when the person opens the navigation menu, the items are going to slide in one at a time and then fade out one at a time as well once they close the menu. It all happens pretty quickly, so it's not just one going at a time. We don't want to slow things down too much. That helps add to the site a little bit and make the user experience just a little bit more pleasant. Hi there and welcome. If you're new here to my channel, my name is Kevin and here we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Before we get into the content of this video, I just want to let you know that I'm creating a new course that I'm really excited about. It's called CSS Fundamentals. This course is for people who have started to learn front end development but are getting really frustrated by CSS or people who are coming from maybe a back end environment or coming from a JavaScript world who are looking at CSS and just going, this is the worst language ever. They can't wrap their minds around it. I wanna show people that CSS actually does make sense and that it's not so bad after all. It's about learning the fundamentals of CSS how it, the underlying logic behind CSS, because it is there is a logic that is there and to it. Um, so the course is only going to be launching in March of this year. So if this sounds interesting to you, if you fit into one of those two molds, the address for it is cssfundamentals.training. You can get more information for it there, and there is somewhere you can sign up to get updates on the course. I'll have a couple of them as time goes on, and as we get closer to the launch period, more and more information about exactly what you'll be getting with the course. Also, if it does sound interesting to you, please put your email address in there. There'll be only a one week launch period for this course, and if it's something that interests you, I don't want you to miss out on it. So please go over there, sign up for those updates, Dates, so you can be one of the first to know about when it does come out. With all that out of the way, uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is bringing in those items one at a time. We're going to be looking at delays, animations through CSS. Uh, we're going to be adding in some transitions and really importantly, um, the timing of things. I want to make I want to look at what happens with bad timings as well as good timings because as much as you can do good with these types of things, if you set things up that are moving the wrong way or they're going too fast or too slow, it can actually be bad for the overall user experience because those stand out. If you do these things properly, they become almost not, you don't notice them really. Whereas if you do them badly, that's when people are noticing them. So we wanna make sure that people aren't noticing the problems that are that could come up from stuff like this. So I wanna look at the bad way of doing it and then what we can do to fix it. So when you're doing it, you have an eye of what to look for and, and a few ideas on how you can you know fix things to make them look a little bit better when you're working on them on your own site. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so we're ready to get started with this. Now, one quick thing that I just want to say before we move on, um, in the original one where we looked at doing it, my JavaScript was simply just to toggle the class of site nav open on and off. I've changed that now to toggle it between a site nav open and a site nav closed classes. Um, and the reason that I've done that is, uh, and the reason I've done that, or if we just come here so you can see it has site nav closed, and when I open that, it switches over to site nav open. So it goes back and forth, and it's because we want to be able to use both those classes for the different animations that we're going to be doing on this one. Uh, okay, so the very first thing, I'm here with all my site nav stuff, and what we're going to do is where I have my list items here, and I'm going to play with this a little bit, and the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the opacity on my site nav li to zero. So we can see now if I open that, whoop, we got to save. <laughs> And if I open it, everything is gone. So obviously I want those to actually fade in. So hmm, how can we do that? Um, I'm gonna create some keyframes for this one. So let's come down uh, right to here, since that's after that, and we're gonna do at keyframes, and I'm gonna call it fade in. And my fade in here, so uh, if you don't know about keyframes, this is just how you can, cr one of the ways you can create animations. Um, it's a little bit like a transition, but you can control all the different states. So I'm gonna say at 0%, we're going to have an opacity of zero. And then we're gonna, for now, uh, we're gonna make this a bit more complex after, but let's just go to opacity one. Now, if you find yourself creating keyframes that are just like this, I think it's not really worth it. And you can just use um, a simple transition between two different states and you'd be completely fine. Uh, we're going to make this more complex though, but let's just do this for now to make sure that our, this is actually working. So what we're gonna do now is right here, uh, we have my site nav, open li so my list items when it's open are going to get the animation fade in uh, let's just do linear for now 
as the timing function. And we're going to do, let's just say one second. We're going to fix all of these numbers up. Uh, oh, don't forget the semicolon right there. So it's going to use the animation called fade in. So it's looking at this keyframe. It's going to do it with a linear timing function and it's going to give it the duration of one second. So let's go and see what that would actually look like. You can see they fade in. Oh, but then what happened? They're gone. That's weird, right? And it is weird. And this is one of my pet peeves a little bit with these animations is when the animation is finished, so it runs through, it fades it up to here, and then it goes, okay, I'm done. Let's reset back to what the default state is, which is over here, the opacity of zero. So if ever you have an animation that you want, but you want it to stop at the end instead of resetting back to the beginning, you have to add in the word for words right there. So that means it's gonna run forwards and then stop it, keep that end state. So let's try that again. We should see they fade in. And actually let's make this like, they're fading in pretty fast. Actually I thought one second would be a bit slower. There you go, you can see they very gently are fading in. When I close it though, they're just disappearing. So as soon as I click close, this isn't being applied anymore. So they're just jumping back to this LI state here with the opacity of zero. So you notice again, when I click here, they're gone, which is kind of weird. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is let's, try and make this a little bit more complex because when I click that, instead of just fading in, I also want them to be moving a little bit. So let's add that in here too, where I'm gonna give this a transform. And we can do all this on multiple lines if you want. So I guess we could set it up. My zero is going to run transform, um, will be translate X. And I'm gonna start with 100%. We're gonna play with this number a little bit so we can explain a couple of things along the way. And that's going to start there and we're going to, whoop, I should have grabbed the whole thing. At 100%, we want my translate X to be at zero. So it goes, uh, when the animation's done, it's moved over. So now when I open this, they should slide in and fade in at the same time. And it takes two seconds to do the entire thing. So this is where animations come in. So when you start using your keyframes for your animation, it's because you wanna do multiple different things at the same time is part of it. But right now we're also running between zero and 100%. The nice thing with these keyframes is you can actually add midpoints. So I could actually come in here and say at 75% or it could be 50% or wherever you want, and we can add in another one. So what I'm actually gonna do is I want the opacity to be like 0.2 at this stage. So let's see what happens if I save that. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just make this zero so it makes it a little bit more evident what's happening. So they're already gonna be moving now. They should be, see there we go. Like they've already moved. We're starting them all the way over here and they're only gonna start appearing when they're 75% of the way finished the animation. So let's open it. New. So really late, I find that kind of weird because you have this awkward delay that's coming in. Part of that is this time is way too long as well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I, I want them to be at like 0.2 at this point. I want them appearing, but um, I don't want them to be just like, you know, I want them to be a little bit there, but not all the way in yet. I'm going to change the time on this a little bit. Should we, yeah, uh, let's do it like 750 milliseconds just to speed it up and let's check this out again. So you can see they come in much faster now. See how fast that is, it seems kind of weird. And they're really just like, -doo, and they stop, they just stop. And that's because we're on linear. So we could use something like ease in, ease in out, ease out. Let's just say we went with ease in, it's not gonna be bad. Ease in's gonna mean, whoop, we did the wrong one, ease out. <laughs> that sort of sped up as it went along. There we go, you can see they sort of slow down as it pulls into place. So that's already better. They're moving really fast though, but it's much better than what it was before. You, it feels a little bit more natural. If you really wanna make things look more natural though, I'd really encourage you to use a cubic bezier instead of using um, just one of these default timing functions. Now there's two different ways you can do it. There's this fantastic site. Um, so yeah, there's cubicbezier.com, which is really nice because it gives you an idea and you can get a little preview of the differences here. Most good cubic beziers do something like this and then go. So they start slow, they go fast, and then they slow back down again. So that's this pink one at the top here. So you can see it's going slow, fast, slow. It just makes it feel a little bit more natural because it has to accelerate. Something in the real world usually has to accelerate, then it needs to start slowing down again before it just stops. So most of them are gonna look something like that. Now, 
if you don't want to open up your own, you know, cubicbezier.com, which isn't too hard to remember, you can also open up your dev tools, shift command or shift control C and mine were not docked in. Um, so if you find something that has a cubic bezier on it, so it's my allies here, here we go, where it says ease in, you see this weird little thing here. I'm just going to click on that. Chrome has something really similar too. And look at that. You get these nice things. So I'm going to go to ease in out because it's already going to give us something and you can play with these a little bit and you can see if I drag this around, it's starting to move everything around and you can see the numbers right here. So you can just copy and paste it afterward. Now the nice, easy, best starting place is 0.5. I'm never going to get there just through dragging 0 0.50, 0.50. 0 and then over here, a 0.5 and then a one is like a really nice starting place because it's just this really consistent curve. It's not too extreme that it goes flying anywhere. So if you're not sure where to start 0.50, 0.51 is a really nice starting place for these. But then of course you can experiment with it a little bit more as you're going. I think I'm just gonna pull this one back a little bit. So it starts off a little bit faster, but then slows down and then we can do something like that. Um, and we'll copy that whole thing and replace uh, right there. And let's hit save on that and see what it looks like. So let's try that one more time. I just find a nice slow way to come in. Now it's using this cubic bezier for both the opacity change and the transform. So that is important to know. Um, the other thing I'm actually going to do on this is I'm going to copy this and normally it'd be all the way at the top of your site. You'd have your root where you might set up some custom properties. So we could just call something here like bezier and put it there because if you're using it over and over again, you don't want to have to type all this out. You just want a nice little keyword that you can use. So I think I'm going to do that. So var bezier. If you don't know about custom properties, uh, I do have a nice six part series on them. There should be a thing on the screen to get to that or a link down in the description below where you can watch that series on custom properties and all the amazing things you can do with them. And again, normally you'd find this route all the way at the top. Uh, actually, let's bring it up there now that we created it just so we follow some better practice. Okay, so it's sort of working, but it's, um, okay, we'll leave it like that actually. And we're gonna do a fade out next. Um, because when we close it, we want it to fade out. And this is the whole reason I had my site nav opened because I also wanna do something similar for my site nav closed, li, and that I wanna run an animation. Now, what I was actually hoping to be able to do was something like this, but do reverse. Uh, because you can run reverse. You can run animations backwards. No problem at all. You just put the reverse keyword in there and they should run backwards, but you'll notice it's still not working when we do that. And what we actually need to do in this case is come up with another animation that is my, uh, so I have my fade in. So we'd actually have to come in on something like this and just because I can, I'm gonna shrink this down so it takes up a bit less room. Because uh, I don't like my keyframes taking up a lot of room. I think we can still line everything up nicely. You know, we could, you know, you can space things out so opacity is in the same place on all of them and the transforms in the same place on all of them, something like that. Um, just to make life a little bit easier so it doesn't take up as much room. Because what I'm going to do is copy this, paste it, but we want to switch it around. So this should be one. I'm actually going to have this at like a zero, zero, I think would be fine. And I think we can leave that just like that for now. Let's hit save. Uh, except this, we should be called fade out. And then over here, we'll keep this as forwards and we'll call it fade out. And now we should be fading in. Except we have a problem. Have you noticed the problem? <laughs> There's two problems. One of them is they're moving the wrong way. Uh, so let's switch this around because that's the easy one to fix, zero and 100. But there's also a thousand. Wow, that's pretty moved over. Um, so now they're coming in and they're going out. Oh, there we go. Fading in, fading out. Haha, we fixed it. I thought there was two problems, but it turns out there's only one. Um, so it is technically working and you can see that it is working pretty well, but something feels a little off about it, I find. The first thing, and this is where we got it working. We get it coming in and we get it going out that way. Uh, one of them is that it's going out that way. Um, if you try doing it where it's actually going out the opposite way, I find it super unnatural where it like moves the opposite way that the menu shrinking. So right now it's moving 
in with my menu, but then it's moving against my menu. I find that really awkward. So just make sure, I, or I think I'm saying just make sure, but I, I find personally that it makes it feel a lot more natural when things are running in the same. So it comes out with my menu and then my menu goes the other way. It pulls back the same way my menu shrinking. I find that makes it feel more just organic. The next thing is, um, this is really common where you end up with like, you want to move it off the screen and into the screen. Um, it's sort of the reason why I did this though. I think it makes a lot more sense to start this at not so far away. So say you did like negative 200 pixels or something like that. It can make it feel so much more natural. Uh, not negative. We should be positive 200 that moved the wrong way again. Um, but as a positive, see how it still gives you the illusion that it came in from really far but it's just sort of fading in a little bit there because it, when it first starts coming in, it, it had the opacity of zero and then it moved just a little bit. And then at that last step that sort of comes all the way in. So the fade in there just seems it's already in motion when you start seeing it. So it could have come from really far, but because it's not moving so fast, it just feels a little bit nicer. And of course we can do the same thing the other way where this could go like 200 pixels or it could maybe go more the other way just to speed it up while it leaves. But um, actually, I think I will do more because it looks like it's slowing down a little bit too much on the way out. And that looks a little bit better to me. I might even change that a little bit on the way out. But before we do that, the last thing I want to do, which I also find helps with things overall, is when they're coming in a little bit like a staggered. They're doing one after the other after the other. So whenever you have an animation, you can also add a delay. So it's your animation delay. It could be another number that you just add here because this animation is shorthand for the animation name, the animation timing function, the timing, I guess, and the direction. I think it's animation direction. I could be wrong on that one. Um, but you can do an animation delay. And I'm just gonna do one second here so we can see what it does. So, it, whoops, I did duration, delay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, hey, nothing changed there. Uh, so there, we wait a second and then the animation happens. So if we want to, we can also delay this by saying, and actually I just realized I put all these before my keyframe. A lot of the time I do it the other way around just cause it's easier when you're reading the code. But anyway, we'll leave it like this for now. Um, what we can do is, I guess we'll do it here. Uh, yeah, we'll do it here. And we'd have my site nav open li and then nth child one and on my nth child one we want to give that an animation animation can i just write delay and it figures it out yeah and how long we want to delay that for i'm in it for now let's just do one second just so we can see what's happening where it's only going to affect the first one so do you see that it closes that way but when it opens all of them come in and then that first one came in so I think that's a really long delay though. I'm gonna say like a hundred milliseconds. And even if you did the first one without a delay on it, you could even, you know, we could do a zero. And again, I wanna save a bit of space cause this is gonna take up a lot of lines. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it like this, copy two, three, four, five. And then we wanna change all these. So now when I click, it should be one, two, three, four, five. So you see how they all, they sort of come in one after the other like that. And it looks kind of not like it just, they're all settling into place as the menu. And I also think because of the circular nature of the menu, like the way it grows in, I think it feels more natural that it works that way as well. Um, maybe these delays could be a little bit shorter to be honest with you. So they just all move into place a little bit faster, but overall, or maybe this one could actually be at zero then one, two, three, four. So if you are using something just like this one, maybe that's worth experimenting with just to see if you think that that would work a little bit better for you. And then what we could do is copy all that. And then here on the open, instead of open, we want all of those to be on closed. And then these delays would get switched or whatever, five, four, three, two, one. Um, so we're reversing the animation delay. So the first one is the, you know, we go in, but then when we go out, we want it to start at the bottom. So we go in that way and we go out the other way except there's a little problem there. Look at that. See how they come in and then when I click, they vanish before they start to work. The problem that's happening right now is we have an animation delay of 100 
uh, we have an animation delay on them. So before the animation kicks off, they're going back to this state. And I'm actually wondering if we still need that, to be honest with you. Let's try without it because of these animations we have on there. Yeah, you can see that weird thing that goes on there because of the delay. So we actually need to have this on here. Um, but I'm going to have that on site now open. Uh, or you know what, just to make it even more clear on everything that's happening here, do, do, do. sitenav open will be opacity of zero and my sitenav closed will be an opacity of one. So that's the starting, uh, we could say like, oh, the starting state. Uh, for the two of them, right? So it's starting at an opacity of one. It's just going to prevent that weird flickering thing from going on. So now they all fade in properly, and then we click there, and they all disappear properly as well. And I'm actually thinking, see how when I open it, they all sort of come in, but when I close, like when I close it, they're the home hasn't even started moving yet. So there's two solutions to that. I think one of them could be like a 500 millisecond. We could do that where they're going to come in, and it's just going to go a little faster to get rid of them. Or maybe in this case, we do a zero, one, two, three, four. Um, and it, it's just gonna make them get out of the way a little bit faster, because I think it's, you know, the home's still not there uh, overall. Maybe we could even put a little bit of an animation delay on, um, or a transition delay. So we could do that where, do, 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 site nav, or actually it'd be up here where my supports is, clip path. Uh, here even I could add in like a 250 second millisecond. So this is on my transition, but it's still adding a delay to the transition. Actually, we don't want that. Uh, yeah, that's actually exactly. Look, when you go like that, it looks pretty good because of my little turning X. The timing of it doesn't seem so bad. Um, actually, I think I'm just going to do it here. Transition, delay. Oh, not even on that one. We're going to do it on the site nav close site nav closed uh, transition delay of like 250 milliseconds, maybe. So when it opens, it opens right away. When we close, they start moving out of the way and then it closes with it. So it looks like here we go. And then woof, the rest of it closes. Um, they're already they've already accelerated up to speed. So it looks like they're getting pushed along with the menu closing. So just looking at the timing and looking at the way those are interacting with each other with all these different animations that are going on, I think is very important. So that's about it. I think we've completely wrapped up this navigation for now. I do want to re-explore this to make it as accessible as possible type of navigation because there are some accessibility issues with it as it stands. But for now, I want to focus more on micro interactions. We're going to have some other ones in future videos. If you have any ideas for ones you'd like to see, please leave a comment down below to let me know about what it might be because, you know, and the more we have, the better, the more stuff we can explore with these fun little animations and fun little just interactions we can build in for the user. So please let me know about that with a comment down below. If you learned something new in this, also let me know what it was down below. I'd love to know when people are learning new things through these videos. If the course sounded interesting to you and you didn't yet go and sign up, don't forget it's cssfundamentals.training. You can go there and sign up to get updates so you don't miss that one week launch period. Thanks once again for watching. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here on YouTube. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.